Hey guys, and tis the season for making an advent calendar in Scratch. In this video, I'll show you how you can make your own advent calendar in Scratch. By the end of this video, you'll have your own working advent calendar that shows a backdrop for each day. Now, this project does have a lot of code. No, I mean code, not coal. Although you might find that you want to send me some after watching this video, because this project entails making 26 costumes and 26 backdrops. And at the time of this recording, I haven't even finished all those backdrops. However, you can choose to make these backdrops as simple or complex as you like. And since it will restrict users from choosing future dates, you don't have to do future backdrops right away. However, once your project is finished, you'll have a complete advent calendar for all 25 days. And once this video is published, I'll get to work on finishing all those backdrops. Now, since I made most of the assets, you can find a bare bones project in the description below. Now, are you ready? Let's get started. First off, delete the cat because we won't be needing it. Now, let's make our first backdrop and our first script. So I'm gonna head over to backdrops and I'm gonna choose something like stars. <laughs> Okay, next I'm going to create a large star to add to these stars. I'll speed this part up, but if you want to create this star too, first of all, I'm going to create a rectangle and then I'm going to use the reshape tool to turn it into a triangle. I'll make four of these into a format like this. Then I'll make another four of these triangles like this, except in a gray color. I'll put in the back of the original triangles and then we have our large star. Finally, I'll group it all so it's one big group. Now, feel free to title this backdrop and delete the other backdrop that we have. Now, let's make our first script. Head over to code and then in events, drag out a one green flag clicked block. Now at the beginning of the program, we should have the backdrop revert to this backdrop. So in looks, drag out switch backdrop to stars into here. After that, let's create our only sprite dates by clicking the paint tool. Now, let's add some costumes. Not the type that you wear at the Christmas pageant. Speaking of, who's putting in these images? And this kazoo sound? Wait a minute. Oh no, please stop! So, this sprite will have 25 costumes, one for each date. Now, if you include one empty costume, that's 26 different costumes. They are all similar except for the date, but it's still a daunting task. Thankfully, if you don't want to do 26 costumes, you can just import them from the Bare Bones project, which you can find in the description. But if you want to make your own, here's how to do it. Let's leave the first costume blank, and then let's select another costume, such as gift. Next, we need to put some text on the sprite. Zooming in and using the text tool, I'm gonna type in the number one. I'm gonna choose curly and make it green. I'm also gonna make it a bit whiter. Finally, you need to duplicate this costume 24 times and add each number from one to 25. And since doing that right now, will make this video go on forever. Finally, let's head over to the backdrops. And now you need 25 backdrops, one for each day. Make sure to add them in order. So day one will be the first backdrop that you add, day two will be the second backdrop that you add, and so on. Now, again, you don't have to add future backdrops right away, since our project will restrict you from clicking on future dates. Now, let's get coding. Head over to code, make sure the date spray, and then in events, drag out a when green flag clicked block. Now, we're gonna be creating clones, so we can just hide the original sprite and show the clones. So in looks, drag out hide. So. Let's start creating some clones. We should have a 5x5 five five grid of the dates on the stage. First, we need to set our position to where we will start putting clones, namely here. Next, we need to create 5 clones, moving to the right and changing the costume each time. And after those clones have been made, we repeat those steps 5 times. So, let's do this. To begin with, go to motion and drag out our go to xy block. Let's set the values to negative 180 and 140. Next, also in looks, drag out the switch costume to block, 
and let's set it to the first costume, which if you go to the costume tab is costume six. Now in control, drag out two repeat 10 blocks like this. And I'm going to change the values to five. After this, go to looks and drag out next costume into here. Then in control, drag out create clone of myself. Then in motion, drag out change X by 10 and set this to 90. What this will do is it'll go across the screen and create clones, five of them to be exact. After this, drag out a change Y by 10 block down below and set this value to negative 70. This will go down 70 steps. Then drag out a set X2 block right here and set the value to negative 180. That way it'll go back to the left of the screen. Finally, in looks, drag out next costume so it ends up being an empty costume. Once that is done, if we press the green flag, nothing will happen. That's because we need to show the clones. To do that, head over to control and drag out a when I start as a clone block. Then in looks, drag out a show block. Now, when we click on the green flag, all the clones will show. Great. Now, there's one small issue here. We can see the process of the clones being created. This can lead to some glitches, such as being able to click on one of the clones before it's created. So let's fix this. Head over to my blocks and let's create a new my block and call it clones. Now, this is where the magic happens. If we click run without screen refresh, which we should, then the screen won't refresh until we're done creating all the clones and then all the clones will show at once. Once that's selected, click OK. Let's drag this right here. Put this right here. I'm going to drag this back. And finally, drag clones into here. Now, when we click on the green flag, all the clones will show at once. Great. After this, let's add a super cool effect. Once we hover over one of the sprites, let's have it smoothly become larger. And then when we unhover, it will smoothly become smaller. In order to do this, we basically need to take the current size, subtract it from the size that we want, and divide it by two. Then we get the size we should change by. If this is slightly confusing, think of it this way. Instead of directly going to the size that we want, we'll go halfway there every time the script is loading, making a smooth animation. To resume, let's drag out an if then else block in control. Then in sensing, drag out touching mouse pointer. Then in looks, drag out a change size by 10 block into here. Now, let's do the smooth animation. Go to operators, drag out a divided by block and a minus block. Let's set this to two, this to 150. And in looks, drag out size. Now, when we click on the green flag, and hover over one of the sprites, nothing happens. Oh yeah, I forgot to add the forever block. <laughs> so now when we click on the green flag, we can hover over one of the sprites, but when we unhover, it doesn't stop. So let's quickly fix this. Duplicate, set this to 100. Then when we click on the green flag, no hover and unhover. Great. Now, let's get into the exciting part, showing the backdrops. Go over here, and then in events, drag out the when this sprite clicked block. Then in looks, drag out switch backdrop to block, and then let's change this to costume number. Now, when we click on the green flag, and then click on one of these, we get the backdrop, but it's behind all these sprites, so we can't see it. To fix this problem, we'll use a message. It turns out clones can hear messages too. So in events, drag out broadcast message one and let's change this to show. Then when I receive show, let's simply hide the sprite. Now when we click on the green flag and click on one of the dates, the sprites will hide. Great. Now this project is technically finished, but there's still a lot of features that we still need to add. So. Let's add those features. First things first, what happens if the user wants to go back and look at an earlier date? Right now, they would have to click on the green flag again, but why not add that functionality within the project? 
First, let's head over to the backdrops code. And in events, drag out this when stage clicked block. Then let's drag out broadcast show and change this to hide. We also need to change the backdrop back. So duplicate this and put this in the here. Next, let's head over back to the date sprite. Let's drag out when I receive hide. And then let's drag out show. But we don't want to show for all sprites, only the clones and not the one that is not a clone. So in control, drag out an if then block. Now remember how we set the sprite to be the first costume? So let's just check to make sure that it's not the first costume. So in operators, drag out a not block and then an equals block. Then in looks, drag out costume number and set this in the one. Then we'll drag this back here so that there's more room for us to work. Now, when we click on the green flag, click on one of the sprites and then click back, we see the dates again. We can do this for all the dates. Now, second, we're able to access all 25 dates now, but at the time of this recording, it's currently the fifth. So that means we shouldn't be able to access all 25 dates, just one through five. So let's add this functionality. First, let's create a sprite that isn't being used. To do this, we need to set the color effect to infinity. So if you see my currently most popular short, you may know that when you set a variable to infinity, you can use it for a variety of purposes. Well, it turns out you can use this to create a grayscale effect. Thanks to N64 Mario for pointing this out. And instead of creating a variable, we use a trick where you can divide one by zero, which creates infinity. Wait, dividing one by zero? You can do that? The planet of math errors, errors, errors. So let's add the effect. Let's go over here and then control, drag out an if then else block. So the if part is like this. Now in operators, drag out a not block and then a less than block and then a plus block. So in looks, drag out costume number in the here. Then in sensing, drag out current year and set this to dates, and then finally set this to one. Now, let's create the grayscale effect. Head over to looks, and then drag out clear graphic effects into here. What we're basically doing is if we want people to click on the date, we're basically removing all effects. Then, let's drag out set color effect into here, then in operators, drag out a divided by block, set this to one, and this to zero. And as you can see, all the sprites that have the effect are grayed out. Great. Now there's one small issue here. You can click on them. To fix this, head over to when sprite clicked over here. In control, drag out an if then block. Then let's duplicate this script from into over here. Now, if we try to click on one of the sprites, we can't. Great. So we're done at this project. Now there's one small thing I should mention. So if you want to do an advent calendar, but want more than just the backdrop, you're going to have to do a few things. So remember how we deleted Scratchy? We're going to bring him back. First, you need to hide the sprite at the beginning of the project. Second, when you receive hide, we need to check and see if the backdrop number is equivalent to the number that you desire plus one. So an operator is drag out an equals block and then a plus block in here looks backdrop number and then the date you want plus one and then drag out show into here and anything else that you want to add will go into here finally in events drag out when i receive show let's duplicate hide and then in control drag out stop all and then set it to other scripts in the sprite. Now one more thing, you still have to have all 25 backdrops, but you can make them blank if you want to. And of course, you might have to manipulate this code a little bit, but I will give an example when the finished project is ready. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe for more Scratch and Python tutorials. Watch out for my next video. Be there or be MC squared. Merry Christmas. See ya.